So what was your first contact with Team Lotus? First contact with Team Lotus was actually from motor, uh, Autosport because I was doing Cooper Jack 500s um, with a guy from the, who worked for Wessex Motors and Henleys in Salisbury. We were uh, doing a little bit of hill, cl- hill climbs and into motivation. Didn't really know what we were doing, but it was good fun. And I thought, you know, being a mechanic uh, at Henleys, I really got interested in motivation. I used to buy the Autosport. And in the back, one day they had... Uh, uh, vacancies at Team Lotus. I thought, wow, that, that's the bee's knees. And um, so I applied for the job. And at that time, um, the Hendys had transferred me to Andover Garages, which I had to go from Salisbury to Andover every day in the little van they gave me, little, little A35 van, Austin. So I applied for the job, sent it off, and I got a reply back. Uh, from a certain person called Jim Angelwhite and said, no, um, no, you haven't got the job, but please, you know, we'll keep you in contact, etc., etc." I thought, oh, well, that was it. It was a good try. Right. Two weeks later, a letter came back saying, apologising that you did get the job. <laughs> please come to Chessant, North London, for an interview. I thought, wow, OK. They gave me the date. So I felt ill that that day, that one morning, I thought, they can't come in today. So, on. on the little A35 van, I hustled up, ran the North Circular, uh, A30 North Circular, up to Chesson, found it, with a map, by the way, because yeah. uh, guys, in those days, we didn't have technology, but we used to get there in those days, didn't get lost. Uh, anyway... And I got to Chesson, and my interview was with a guy called Bob Dance, who was then uh, chief mechanic on the Cortinas, Formula One, mm. and everything else. So Bob gave me the uh, interview, and um, that was it. Um, went back and. Um, when can you start? I was going to say, how long before you started? Oh, <clears throat> it was like a couple of weeks, literally. Right. And then, then I said, well, you know, where do I stay? So they said, we've got a bed and breakfast at a place called Bru- uh, Bruce Grove, which is basically opposite White Hart Lane, Tottenham. Right, football ground. Uh, yeah, bed and breakfast. So it wasn't too far from there mm-hmm. to Chesson mm-hmm. in those days traffic wasn't wasn't yeah. a problem so that's what I did and, and uh, that was that was me starting in Team Lotus so what did you start doing you uh, first on? of all they they put me on the Lotus Cortinas right um, helping out with the with the crew there it was Bob Sparshot um, Sid Carr mm-hmm. uh, Ray Smith um, I worked up with Ray and that'd be it and, the whole crew? Pete, yeah, the, basically that would be it, the whole crew. And uh, Bob was chief sure. mechanic as well, so yeah. so we'd go uh, to the races with that. But they got me doing stuff. Two cars? Two cars, Pete Arundel and Jimmy Clark. Mm-hmm. And, and you were just a general... Yeah, I, I was <clears throat> in between. I could be working on, you know, helping, Yeah. you, you know, the, the, the mechanic on each car would be going from one to the other. There would mm-hmm. be... Spa shot, Sid, Ray Smith, me, Bob. Um, you know, I would be, if you like, the boy. Yeah. Although, you yeah. know, I was 20 plus, just. Of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so it was, and it was Bob Dance who pretty quickly sussed it out, like the nickname, Beaky. He said, that Dave Sims, he's got a bit of a nose on him. So I reckon he's got a bit of a beep there. So and that was it. Right. End of that was it. So from this day onwards, from that day onwards to this day right now, that is it. Because everyone had a nickname. Everybody has a nickname. Yeah, um, they had to have. Yeah, and Bob being the vicar. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Chesson was um, was obviously I used to stay round at night sometimes looking at the guys working on F1 yes 
Were you in the same workshop? Oh, it's all in the same. (coughs) And uh, in the Indy car there, you go, oh, look at that, you know. And uh, I even, one Christmas, the first Christmas, the only Christmas I worked down at Chesson was uh, Alan McCaw, who was working on F1. He was getting a Tasman car ready Mm -hmm. um, to put a, a two and a half litre, uh, I think it was a two and a half litre, it's a BRM engine in the Lotus mm-hmm. for Tasman series only. And you had to work over Christmas. In the F1 car. In, on the, the F1 engine. car, yeah. yeah. And, um, <coughs> and in Alan Murray Dog was his nickname. He said, Do you want, to give, do you want to give us a hand? I said, well, Work on an F1 car? Phew, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I won't go home for Christmas. Absolutely. So we're working over Christmas. Yeah. So I helped, you know. My first experience yeah. in a formula car of that category in those days helped Alan fit the engine in. So what year would that have been? That must have been 66. Right, end of 66. Yeah, it must have been, yeah, before we moved up to Chesson <laughs> yeah. in 67. Um, yeah, so I did that, and that was bee's knees. Same. And that was the first time I heard, too, it, when I was in Chesson, they started the Indy car up. Right. With the four of them, I never heard anything like I'll it. Then. It was fantastic. I mean, this, and then you transporters, the old bed for thing. Well, well, you know, this is the bee's knees. Yeah. Mm. So it gave you enthousi- enthusiastic and made you. So you, you helped him on the doing the stuff on the Indy car, on the Tasman car? Yeah, just for that Christmas. The, but you were still on the core team at that done. point? Yeah. Sort of proper job? Yeah, yeah. So, so And then you, how did you get across into single seaters from the Cortinas? We Did it. No, we moved up to uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, new factory up to factory, and then uh, a couple of a few races with the Mark One Cortinas. Yeah, um, yeah. But then it went to the Mark Twos, mm-hmm. um, and Billy Koo was chief yeah. mechanic on that, which wasn't a successful car. Mm. Uh, it didn't work like the Mark One. Well, it didn't because no. other manufacturers are coming in with, you know. Of course. The British Saloon Car Championship was getting really serious yeah. and there was a lot of competition and mm. the Mark IIs didn't really work. And that would have been for Graham Hill and Jackie X. Yes. Is that right? The Mark yeah. IIs? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Jackie X. Did Jimmy okay. drive a Mark II? I can't know. No, I don't think he did, no. did he? No. For some reason? No. Was he, he might have been a tax exile at that point? Well, he was 66. No, he didn't. And from there, um, six, you know, 67, 67, yeah. went into... F2? F2. You got into the Formula 2 team? Yeah, well, um, with Lotus Components, the car yes. I had to run, space frame, chassis, yeah. with Jackie Oliver. And and it was um, Jimmy Graham, Bob Dance, crew chief, mm-hmm. Sid, Sparshot. All the same people? Uh, um, Doing Eddie, all the... Eddie. Not Eddie Dennis, I can't remember when he was Eddie. I don't think Eddie was on F2. Mm-hmm. But we had... Um, I can't remember the second name of Ian from Norfolk. He's got a big business in Norwich now. You don't know been on that? Ian. On the F2s? Yeah. Um, there's a photograph of in our book. Yeah. Um, of them. It, it, of you. Yeah, it's either Poe or Elby. Yeah. Um, of, of the whole team. Mm. But the Lotus Components car was a, a, a absolutely basically known competitive. Yeah. Very dangerous cars regarding um the the fuel tank it was rubber but it was just a rub, very thin rubber fuel cell just sat in amongst the space frame. Yeah. No cell. It was not placing a, a cell so so we had so protruding yeah. nuts and bolts and sticking into it. You sticking into it and taping this and yeah. covering it with alley this and, and when it f- put a full tank mm-hmm. Jackie would be pushed forward. The seat would just break the Zeus's and push yeah. the car forward. It was ever. It was an absolute disaster, Aye. and it was not competitive, Aye. and it wasn't really a fair, mm. fair run for him at all. Yeah. <laughs> just, but good job. It was never an accident with that car. It would have been a disaster. Yeah. So. So when did you first get involved with Jim Clark? <clears throat> Jimmy On the Cortinas. Yeah, yes, you know, usually Jimmy was always talked to everybody. 
Right. You know, there wasn't just one guy that would look after his car. He would just talk to all of you. Yeah. And what was happening in day to day. Right. And what he's doing, mm -hmm. how his farm was going and in all this and and you could have a nice chat to him but then seriously get down to the race and he would yeah. he was there come out, he would, he'd be there doing a mm. quick debrief with Colin yeah and uh, he'd go for it and he, he he took it super seriously although a lot of you know the saloon car racing then a lot of guys you know the F1 people would think it was a bit of a laugh and, yeah but Jimmy took it seriously yeah it was racing. We got results as well, didn't he? He got results. He was so oh, quick. Unbelievable. Yeah. Remember Crystal Palace in Mark 1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it was nearly scary seeing him on two wheels. I mean, yeah. But well, three wheels. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Something you don't see anymore. That's right, unfortunately. Yeah, you see Jimmy at Woodcut yeah. at Silverstone. Flat. Absolute full drift. Full. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it was all under control. All under control. No problem. No, it was yeah. really good. Yeah. Absolutely. So what about Colin Chapman? You obviously must have got involved with him very, or you know, knew him yeah. very, very early on. Uh, uh, absolutely, you know, because I was just a, a team member, but he always um, used to make sure that it uh, it talked to you and what you're doing. Right. What are you doing now? Sort of so you what out. have you got? What Bob? What has Bob got you on? Mm -hmm. or, or what? It was Android or Scammel, yeah. whichever team manager, whatever project he was on. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, good. Well, make sure you do it properly, etc., etc., et and follow the rule book as per. Yeah. And, and you know, got, get used to make sure it's done properly. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, when you building new cars, we had to weigh everything. Every nut and bolt was weighed. Right. Um, what and written down. Yeah, absolutely. With Morris Philippe then would also make sure that yeah. this was done yeah. so that they would see what the total weight of the car was fully finished. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. that's, you know, he was... And, you know, some of the stuff was a bit thin, a little bit smooth. Oh, that's a bit... Mm, yeah. Is that going to work? going to last? And the old man, you'd <clears throat> say, that, you know, what, what's your problem? Well... You know, you don't question him. No. Um, and you never like that. And say, what are you doing this for? Yeah. So you uh, Morris fully said, no, no, don't bring that up. Just <laughs> really, just, just do it. Yeah. As, as, as Colin used to say, if if you put a two ba boat in the right place, you could hang, you could lift a double decker bus with that in the right position. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. But you know, he was. If you did something wrong, playfully, um, which we did, like um, the occasional acetylene bomb, and, and also the 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 cannon we made from uh, the Indy cars had these thick drive shafts. Right. Uh, the metal was imported from the States and uh, the hollow so big lengths of it used to come so we converted one length we welded up the end and put a um, plug thread right. for you know standard plug in the end yeah. and we made a big barrel and we put the plug in and connected it to a 12 volt battery and then we stuffed the whole thing with project job. We yeah. stuffed it with rags and petrol mm -hmm. and and anything else that would go in there hard. Yeah. And we let it go one day, and it went it went over the top outside it, up in Norwich at Hethel. And it went over into the farmer's field up amongst his cows. And, yeah. and apparently, the farmer was out there. Was best pleased. Wasn't too happy. So. Colin yeah. came in and he was the right next that, day. Was he, or what? Well, yeah, he <clears> said, that's not funny what you were doing. That was, can be highly dangerous and really silly, but, but you did it all wrong. You, you had the elevation wrong, because if you had the elevation right, if you marked it out, I'll ma do the mathematics for you, in the size of the barrel and the amount of explosion you had stuff in there, see, they would have gone over the top of the cows and in the next field, but 
you don't know what you're doing, so don't do it again. <laughs> and he was laughing his head off. Yeah. He was, thought it was really funny. <laughs> but he said, just don't waste your time anymore. Just get on with your work. And obviously, I presume, if you're working on a car and you made a little slight ad- adjustment of your own without telling him or whatever, he, really, he wouldn't like that? Uh, he wouldn't like that at all. <clears throat> it, but, yeah. No, you know, you go to Mars and say, say can we do this? What about, mm-hmm. You know, can we be like, no, 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 just stick to the stick to it, stick to the blueprint. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, right. You know, it, that was, even if it worked, even if it worked, um, but um, on the seventy-two, we were the left, the left rear front wishbone pickup bracket kept breaking right you know it, it happened three times with Emerson and I remember the old man yeah, Emerson saying why does it keep breaking what, what are we doing it was Ontario Speedway it was a non-championship yep. race yep. it happened there and Emerson got it it was a mix of race it was a Formula 5000s and Formula 1 all together yeah uh, of course, the Ontario Speedway don't exist anymore. No. That's a housing estate now, and uh, it was it was a banking. It was like an in, oh, an Indy car circuit, and the so I actually said to Colin, I said, oh, "Why is it breaking?" And he wasn't best pleased with that. He was not pleased <clears throat> at all. He was not pleased at all. So. Morris Philippe come up and told me, he said, you better be careful. He said, uh, the old man doesn't like that for coming from a mechanic. Um, he said, so I'd be watch it if I was you. So, oh, okay. Mm, okay. Just testing. You see? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, you know, Colin was you know, good mood and he was a very acceptable person. And he was able to think on his feet as well, wasn't he? you know uh, during a session and stuff like that to make some changes in the car and things like oh non-stop yeah non-stop um and and you know the job list would be big absolutely um with with the formula cars um if graham was driving it would be bump steer whether it's Formula <laughs> Two or Formula One, mm-hmm. it'd be bumps there. He just loved his bumps there. Oh, the bumps there! I can feel it coming down the pit lane. I mean, oh, in bumps there, you know, to do the bumps there was because it? it's yes, it's okay in the factory where you've got a nice flat floor. But you're in when you're in a pit lane or a paddock. Well, <clears> when, <throat> when you're in the paddock in those days, there wasn't such a thing as a flat no. pits. That, you know, in the back, it didn't exist. No. Um, Silverstone was 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 pretty good in those days, but you go to places like Claremont Ferran, uh, who was you know you your Lotus seventy two was up amongst the blackberry bushes yeah, and yeah. on a on a gradient you in know. the grass. Yeah, oh yeah, mm. you, to do the bump stairs, like, it was no way. a complete waste of time. Huh. It was, you couldn't do it properly, mm. and uh, so yeah, that was Graham, but. Um, but Shaman had to think on his feet when someone came in and said, "Oh, it's doing this." Oh yeah, he would because um, he, he, he a bit of a driver, wasn't he himself? Yeah, he, he, he would start writing notes down, and you know, he said, "Well, we won't be doing nothing on this session, but we will be have that right for the next session." Right, and you would have a job list, yeah. a big job list yeah. for sure, especially at night. Yeah, and you never, and you see the Brabham team, you know, oh, well, they're going home. Why aren't we going <laughs> home? <laughs> No, we'll be doing mods. And you'll be still there at 3 You'll be still there the midnight, yeah, all night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was normal. Um, so you were on the crew for Mario's first F1 race, weren't you? Yeah, me and His Del, debut. yeah, me and Porteous. <clears throat> me yeah. and Del Porteous. And um, you know, we heard about Mario from, from Jimmy Yeah, to say that... Um, He's good. This guy is really good, mm. you know. And one, he said, literally, his car control. Be, uh, he went to um, Trenton, Trenton Speedway, yep. with Mario to, to watch him in dirt racing. Mm-hmm. And he said the car control with those beasts 
of cars was mm. fantastic. He said he's he's something else, and it, it, you know, obviously he had experience of Mario Indy. Yeah, and he said, you know, he um, he's someone puts him in F one, he's he's gonna be yeah really good. His possibility of a world champion, he mm. is really really good. Mm. And he used to tell Chapman a lot about about Mario, and and then they. Put so him you in. got him in at was it Watkins Glen? Watkins Glen, first his first one, wasn't it? Sixty nine. That's right. And what happened? And we saw him. It was a Graham Hill chassis, which was long, a little bit long for. So would well, you been running three cars that weekend? Was it Jackie Oliver and Oliver Graham, and, Graham, Graham and, and and Mario? Okay, so he was in one of Graham Hill's chassis. Yeah, because you know, Mario was not tall. No. And we had problems with the pedals. Um, he said, "Well, that's okay. Just put some extension, a little bit of extension on the pedal." Then, mm-hmm. oh, extension on the pedals. Oh, okay, no problem. This guy, you know, he said, and he still couldn't do the steering wheel right. And that was it. His seat it was too long at the back. Yeah. So he said, "Well, we'll have to make a seat." He said, "Well." We had, we knows that we had like jackets, um, overall jackets, like team jackets, shirts, like a doctor's jacket, you know. Yeah. But it was brown. He said, "No, take your coat off." He said, no, "Shove it behind me, fold it, pop the shirt behind me, do the belts." We had actually seat belts, right? Sixty nine. Yeah. And he said, "That's good. That's good. Yeah, that'll do." So right. uh, what, we're going to race like that. He said, "Yeah, that's that's that's." That's good. Leave it like that. No, touch. Make sure. But I want that jacket. Right. <laughs> so, so that was lost my jacket. But <laughs> and then practice. Um, what we didn't do in practice because we had a bit of we had to do change ratios during practice, and there was a bit. Of, I can't remember, we had a bit of an engine problem, which we cured, so we didn't do a lot of running in practice as much as what we wanted to. We didn't do full tanks practice. Right. We didn't do full tanks right. practice. So the next time, full tanks would be for the race. But, astonishingly, everybody surprised. I mean, wow, pole position. Where did that come from? He just said, well... The car, leave it. It's I can out drive it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this got a few problems, but we ain't going to kill them here. Yeah, he said, um, I can cope with it. No problem. It was amazing, hmm. amazing the way he felt the car. That was part of him. Um, it was a wow. This guy is good. Yeah. Who is this guy? You can only turn left. Because you do hear people say, "Oh, it's okay. It's uh, Mario. He's American." And it's his home race. Mm. Apparently, he'd never run at Watkins Glen before. No, it, Ever, in anything. No. So and to get pole, it was, it was amazing. It yeah. was this, this guy <clears throat> is a absolute superstar. This guy, everybody was amazed with Mario and the way yeah. he he laughed and joked with the mechanics, and but he was deadly serious. And what happened in the race? Bottomed out. We four tanks. Full tanks, yeah. didn't have the right levels, mm-hmm. correct, and um, and he had a bit of a clutch problem, so he had to retire it. Yeah. It was a shame, but it, 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 he put his mark on it. Everybody think, wow, and that was it. That was really Mario was then. Signed with but that was just problem. a one-off race with him. That was a one-off race. I wonder why it wasn't followed up. Yeah, we all said that because uh, that would have been the end of the year. Never understand it, it. Mm. because. Um, you know, Watkins Glen, the next race would have been Mexico. Yeah. Um, but no, but it, he'd signed his name on it. You know, it was then, and Chapman then followed him up, for sure. Yeah. I mean, look Kept at it. tabs on him. Look at it. No, he's... Mario, <coughs> to me, Mario and Jimmy, so like, yeah. so much alike, and... Mm. It, Car comes in very cool and calm. Say, well, yeah, we've got this bit of understeer there and there, but leave it. I can cope with it. Don't don't screw around with it. Yeah. And it's, 
his attitude to the whole thing was phenomenal very Clark like very mm. like Jimmy Clark and you have to to say Mario look what he's done Formula 1 Indy mm. yeah you know sports cars yeah saloon cars yeah. everything even the dirt track midgets yeah, everything early on he's done everything absolutely and um, yeah Mario to me I can call him I talked to him you know not long ago and mm. he'd pick up the phone and say how you doing Beak nice super guy mm. um, he's an icon yeah and we've got Jackie Stewart Mario Tangoni went this year mm. or last year mm. and um, there isn't many of that calibre no. left mm. so and Mario is still out there that's right you know with, with the with the Andretti team with his son Michael mm. and he still does um, the two car the two person IndyCar thing in, yeah, yeah yeah he's still on it so <laughs> He's my man.